Hello, I'm Renee Rollins, along with Lisa Burkhart Worley and Michelle Burden, and welcome to Pop Talk, the show where you never know what topics might pop up. Do you feel like your Christian journey lacks power and excitement? If so, hang on. Today we're going to interview a well-known pastor, radio show host, and author whose mission it is to teach pastors about how to have a powerful Christian walk. He also happens to be the brother-in-law of a well-known pastor, radio show host, and author, Dr. Tony Evans. Lisa will introduce our guest. Thank you so much, Renee. Well, we met Dr. Paul Cannings at a brunch and really enjoyed our conversation with him. He's probably the most humble man I've ever met. You'll find that out in just a minute. His sister Lois, who sadly passed away, was married to the well-known pastor, author, and teacher, Dr. Tony Evans. But Dr. Cannings has a thriving ministry of his own in the Houston, Texas area. He's the founder and senior pastor of Living Word Fellowship Church in Houston. He's also the founder founder and president of Power Walk Ministries, great name, a national and global training resource for clergy and lay leaders. In addition, he is the president of Living Word Christian Academy and board member of TL Africa. Dr. Cannings is also on the radio, a show on KHCB 105.7 in Houston, where he serves as a Bible study leader on the Pastor's Corner. He hosts a live question and answer program called the Pastor's Study. His radio ministry extends to the Caribbean, Africa, and he's on Salem radio network stations in Dallas, Orlando, Atlanta, and Moody stations across the country. He also has a TV ministry on NRB TV as well that extends to the Caribbean and Africa and is the author of numerous books, with the latest being a daily devotional. We'll talk about that. It's called A Quiet Place. He's a graduate of the Omega Graduate School Dallas Theological Seminary, and has done some coursework at the University of Oxford in England. Whoa, that's a lot. <laughs> that's <laughs> so, a nice administrative Amazing, <laughs> Dr. She Cannings. Wow. Uh, you've done so much great stuff, and, and I know we're going to get to know you a little bit better on this show, but as I look at all of this, how do you find balance in your life? Because mm. I love the people that I love. So when you love people, it automatically creates balance. Uh, so wow, I love my wife, I love my children, and their, their wives and grandchildren. Got seven grandkids, so, and I love the people that I pastor. So you always, you all, when loving has a way of making you forget yourself, so you always find time. Mm, that is a perfect I word. That. We are calling this program How to Have Quiet Power in Your Christian Walk. Your most recent book is devotional called A Quiet Place, which I'm holding up. It's a 365-day devotional. Can you tell us more about this devotional? You know, I read of several devotionals, and to me, they were just encouraging, moving people forward. But I, I, I wanted people to enjoy the movement and development of the Holy Spirit in them. Mm. Because I believe that when it's kind of like a submarine, the lower it gets, the higher the pressure on the inside. Right. To me, people's lives are in the last days are just getting worse and worse in terms of the experiences yes. that they go through. Yes. And if they learn how to live in the power of the Holy Spirit, yes. then th nothing steals their peace or their joy. And it's got a lot of biblical scripture in it. So they could end up making it a study. They could go to the, to, uh, the index and find different subjects. There's 90 different subjects that is wow, addressed. Wow. So they could go find something on grieving. They could find something on just having a low day. They could find it and see how the Bible addresses that. So instead of just feeling encouraged, they now have a plan as to how to keep yes. themselves focused. That, yeah. It's like that's, almost that's, like an encyclopedia. You know, you can go. Exactly. I really wanted that. So if it, and I didn't want to put it, you have to read it this day. It wanted right. to be where they read what they want to read whenever they choose to read it because mm -hmm. there's 90 different subjects in it. I wanted it to be something that could become like a study guide. Right. They could use it. Yeah. I can't what wait a great to idea. That book. Yeah. yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I grew up with a mom who did devotions every day with eight wow. kids around my bed and a kid in the so girl's cool. bedroom. And she taught me 
my, one of the beautiful things my mom taught me was the fact that it's not just learning the scriptures. Pharisees, Sadducees, high right. priests, they all knew the scriptures, but they knew Christ to the cross. But the thing was, how does the scriptures get to your heart? Mm. And, and that became, matter of fact, it inspired the whole theme, Power Walk. How does it get to your heart? Because then it shapes your life, it builds good character, it keeps your, your focus that God wants for you, and it's coming from the inside out. So even though my mom may not have used those words, that was her passion. It's like it gives you the power to walk the straight and narrow, which you know, exactly. the Lord would like for us to do, right? Yeah, if because you, you, you have something inside of you that convicts you, reminds you of scriptures, and then you end up with a group of people who don't mind you know, straightening you up, you know? so. We don't need that, do we? <laughs> no, we, need that. No, no. we not want that. We need it. Exactly. Some more than others. <laughs> don't point the finger. It's coming in. It's coming in. Well, one thing I know about you, Pastor, is that you love training other clergy and lay leaders. Yeah. You've done a lot of work in the Caribbean islands, in Africa, here in the United States. But I love this. You like to focus on smaller congregations and in urban communities, right? Yes, I so do. So can you talk about the impact that Power Walk conferences are having in these pastors, churches, and just, we want to hear about that. You know, I'd rather say it in a testimony. Sitting in a pastor's office, I was at a conference. It was at his church and they just chose his church as a part of the network of pastors. And he says, come in my office for a minute. Sure, I walk in his office, and he pulls out one of the manuals that was originally something that we did years ago. Wow. And he said to me, he said, I always wanted to train leaders to be effective, but I never knew to do it this way. Mm. And I started, and that's where the passion comes from. I am blessed to have the education that I have, I don't really see that, I guess, again, a mom's influence. I don't really see that as something to rattle around about. It's, it's a resource to bless other people. Yes, that, that's yes. how I see it. Amen. And a lot of people in the African-American community didn't have this opportunity. I mean, you start thinking of Dallas Seminary started accepting African-Americans in the 70s. Tony Evans was one of the first and Reuben Connor oh, wow. and Eddie Lane. Wow. Those were the first. So when you start thinking of an African-American community that really wants to be trained, yes. that was not available. So I'm actually a privileged person, and I just didn't want to uh, just accept that and go on and do what I need to do, but I wanted to be able to offer that back um, to the people that, as a result of their sacrifice, I'm able to stand. So, oh, it, it's, wow. so that's why my passion yep. is the church is already in the urban community, there's land, there's buildings, there's all these things. Yes. So if you try to get the pastors equipped to train their leaders, those leaders go home to families. Yes. Those families are stronger, so you touch communities even more effectively. Mm, I love it. You're paying it forward. You know, we're all leaders probably on this set. Yeah, sometimes, no, we, don't, we, we do fine. <laughs> but but, but what, are, what are some of the topics that you like to teach leaders? What's more, most important? Can you share that? Oh, yeah. I like teaching leaders, number one. What is the real, I like them to go to the scriptures because that kind of breaks through denominational barriers and all that stuff and just let everything be biblically sound. So we're mm. just coming out of the scriptures. If, for instance, the, is Deacon's uh, New Testament concept Technically, it's not. So when you start looking through the scriptures okay. and you start walking through the scriptures, God, for whatever reason, did everything through leaders. He, he didn't do anything. He, he could have, I mean, he's God. He could have opened up the Red Sea without Moses and said, it's time to go. You know, he, he didn't really need the leaders. And, but he used leaders. So what made him choose leaders and what made them great? Because you start thinking of people mm. like Abraham. Abraham's a shepherd. He's, live, he's, not, he's, not, he's living in Haran, and then he, obviously, he's a man of faith. He pulls him out, but he has to take him through a journey, a journey that took yes. Abraham all the way to raising a knife to kill his only son after 25 years. Mm. So what is that journey that Christ took him? For instance, why would Christ pick shepherds in the Old Testament but fishermen in the New Testament? Old Testament is a niche of people, shepherds. New Testament, they're going to the world. What kind of bait you're going to use? Okay. So it, it's, yeah. it's just actually looking at Christ 
God, how he chose those leaders, and then looking at Christ and why would he pick leaders? Why would he say to a group of people that would ask him, hey, I want to follow you. He says, ah, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. The person never said anything after that. But the other guy says, let me go home and bury my dad first. Right. He's looking yes. for his inheritance. And he's going, mm. oh, no, 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 no. Let the dead bury the dead. In other words, you have the faith. But the other guy, he goes to the guy and he goes, follow me. The first guy had to ask. Yep. The second guy, he said, come with me. But he's trying to get a sense of security by getting his inheritance because he just found out you were broke. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he says, let me bury dad. I have the money. I'll follow you. See, he chose somebody. Another person chose him, but he didn't choose them. So there's a lot of different things in the scriptures. When we just go to the scriptures for where they are, why didn't he ever ask a Pharisee to follow him? Mm -hmm. Why didn't he ever ask a Sadducee to follow him? They were leaders. So what makes that different? Yes. So when you look at the scriptures, it really highlights leadership. And that's the reason why we are here today. Yeah. Leaders went out to the world. Right. Yeah, I think sometimes yeah. he sees the leader in people, when, even when uh, the world doesn't see them as a leader. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that. As we mentioned, you do media ministry, both on radio and television. Who is your audience there? And are you still pe speaking to pastors, or is it just whomever is listening? I just want to speak to people that are listening because um, I think one of the persons in New York just put us on in, in Syracuse area. He asked me, that, he said, um, what is your passion? You seem to go from Bible to practical living. That's my passion. I believe if we, uh, knowledge alone, 1 Corinthians 8 says, leads to arrogance. Yeah. Yes. But when a heart is transitioned, it leads to character development. And no person is an island to themselves. God just didn't design us that way. So that is, and life in the scriptures is life to life. So when, I, when you get power walk, meaning how do you take this concept of the Bible? I'll give an example. Why would God never say to a man, teach your wife? Why would he say wash? So sometimes when you look at the scriptures and you start going into their context, then you get not just the sound biblical teaching, right. but you get the practical approach that is user-friendly. Mm -hmm. Because it's, wow. I like what John says, it's a word for life. Mm. Mm. And the action yes. comes from the heart. Yes, that's so, the passion, living cute. word, right. same passion, right. living word fellowship church. Because if you love it all your heart, your soul, and your mind, you'll love your neighbor as yourself. So if you come to church, I walk out the door, don't talk to anybody. It's actually a statement of your spiritual growth. Ooh, that's convicting. That'll that. preach. <laughs> That'll preach. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> what if you're a little bit shy? <laughs> yeah, shy does, does play a role in some people's life. But after a while, they can't help but start the fellowship if you create structure. And I always tell the leaders of our church, let's create a structure that drives them to it. Then if they walk away from that structure because they are, you don't like this person or like that person, I'm going, well, you like yourself too much. Right. Mm. <laughs> wow. and, and following Christ is to deny yourself. Right. It is a cross to yes. carry. Yes. It is a cross. There's somebody who's going to say something different. Somebody's going to act a certain way. Somebody's going to say the words that are different. That's right. why it's a cross to carry. Christ came and became flesh, but he ended up with a cross. That's right. Amen. <laughs> In order to love us. So. Yeah, we can, we can tell he's a preacher, can't we? <laughs> really, really good. That's really good stuff. I want to write it all down. <laughs> we'll be having an invitation. <laughs> Come to the church. You know, we, we just really love hearing what God's doing in your life, Pastor Paul. And we know also that people are curious about your relationship with Dr. Tony Evans, who married your sister Lois. And we didn't know Lois, but we certainly prayed for the family. Mm -hmm. Our church, Gateway, prayed for her. We knew that was a difficult time. Yes, um, but yes, we wanted to ask you just to share some stories <laughs> about your bond <laughs> with Tony Evans. Well, you know, years ago, when Tony came to Guyana, South America, where my parents were, he came on a mission trip, and I always tease him and tell him, you were not. You saw my sister, and you were no longer on a mission trip. I, <laughs> he I, was on a mission. It was a secret mission. It was a different yeah, mission. He, he was at our house more than he was anywhere else. I, I don't care what he says. You know, uh, at good times, my parents passed away, and they became like his parents. Uh, yeah. So there are times that our family's been through the ups and the downs, and 
And Amen. by God's grace, we share it together. And Amen. that that to me is uh, the most precious thing about our family. I know like people would say, y'all are all so independent. So, yep, <laughs> mom and dad raised us. Nobody owes you nothing. Exactly. You just go out and you do what God yes. called you to do. Right. But don't walk around life somebody owes you anything. So we are very independent. But the right. minute somebody's sick or somebody's going through something, we're, a matter of fact, my mom was having knee surgery. And he called me and he says, everybody's in town. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just it. You know, everybody just came in. And, and we are, grew up in a three-bedroom house, eight kids. So somebody's on the couch, somebody's on a sleeping bag. We don't really care because that person is sick. Same thing when my brother was passing away in New York. Everybody was in New York in a one-bedroom well, as a matter of fact, it was a studio apartment. Ooh. Oh, oh my. I'm all about that. They're not very big. Scoot <laughs> over, scoot yes, over. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Roll to the right. Can Roll you sleep the in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, one bathroom. <laughs> yeah. But we just did it for our brother. Right. Well, I never forget what my mom said. We were pushing her in a wheelchair, and she said, I know I taught you all to love each other. I never forget that comment. But that's just how Man. our family is, and Tony being a part of that is just... You know, we we go through the storms, the heights, and the valleys, and the yes. share the good times. And, right. You know, people getting married, kids growing up, sharing all that together to me is what makes it a blessing. But you two yeah. never got into a preach-off, you and Tony. <laughs> right. You know, that's the funny thing. Some people will come to me and they say, you sound like Tony Evans. You preach? I said, no, I, I don't know. I, I hit, Tony is the guy that he's a go-getter. He's just... Tony's mind goes at 100 miles an hour, like every second. Yeah. Wow. So I don't, I, I've, my, I don't know, my, in my heart, uh, I raised my sons that way. Son, uh, he's going out for running back, my son, and he says, Dad, I got to do this against this guy. And I said, no, no, you'll be the best running back. Stop, stop trying. If you compare yourself, this is a standard statement right. I would tell him. If you compare yourself with somebody, then you will limit yourself possibly. Mm, exactly. But if you learn to do the best you can, right. you may still not be as good, Right. but you may end up being better. You just never yes. know, but just be who you are. Amen. It's nice exactly. to hear him teach his son. Great Sunday. advice. Run yeah. your own race. Run your yeah, own run race. Yeah, run your own stop, race. Stop comparing with anybody. You, mm. you guys are such an incredibly gifted family, really. Yeah. Highly anointed, all of you. And uh, But you are so gifted yourself. Uh, you've written so many books, and so I was looking at the list. One was Give Fear a Knockout Punch. Another was Jesus and Money. Don't we all need that book? <laughs> <laughs> but I love this title, this one. I want you to talk about it. Uh, it's called Why Can't Mondays Be More Like Sundays? Yes, you know, so many people, you go to church, hey, God bless you, brother, God bless you. And then the next day, it's like, you know, all, every, you forget everything you learned in church. So mm. can you talk a little bit about this? And why do you think people have so much trouble having power in their lives after Sunday? It's kind of like the spindle in the wheel. There could be a lot of spokes, but there's no spindle. Faith. Mm. Mm. I, I, so people get a lot of word, a lot of information. Those are the spokes. But the bicycle doesn't turn because they don't f understand that none of it works if you're not willing to just trust God, walk with Him, not trying to understand everything. In other words, yes. in other words I don't have to understand why God told me to do something. I just need to be obedient. That's exactly. faith. Exactly. Yeah. Faith is not trying to get it. Faith is trying is committed to believe it. Right. Mm. And and so people many times because of a level of education now, resources that we have, you know, right. there's so many things we could depend on now. We tend to go out and let our society and what our culture does to give us what we need, impetus to do what we do. Social media. But what is in the Bible is they didn't have any of those things, so they were forced to faith. It's kind of like in the like, mm. you know, you go to uh, Africa. I was in Africa and. We were, had a tough situation because some of the gentlemen had two wives. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm teaching on marriage, this ignorant American. And <laughs> I didn't know why they were so quiet. So the gentleman looks at us and he goes, this, this one guy who did have just one wife, most of them did have one wife, he said, I never married my wife. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I, I got a dowry and... We did what we were supposed to do, but I, based on how you define marriage, I'm going to have, I would like to have a wedding at the end of the conference. Wow. You see, that's, so cool. that's the difference yeah. between, to me, hearing something yeah. 
and actually acting it out. Yes. And to me, we have gotten so used to so many churches, so many preachers, so many Bibles, so many books mm. that we just, we just into the spokes, but not into right. faith. Yeah, for God so loved the world that whoever believes, you know, in his only, you know, but anyway, belief, it's an action word. And, and, and I always have said that belief is not just saying the words, it's actually, faith without works is dead, right? Yeah. And so it's actually acting out what you believe. And I think yeah. that, that that's when you see the, when you see the fruit, then you know that that belief is real. See, Lisa, that's the powerful thing with Jesus Christ to me. The disciples, he told, in, in John 5, verse 39, he says to the leaders, you know who I am. Mm -hmm. They killed Jesus, who they know was Jesus. It wasn't that they didn't know. He said, you know me. The disciples, the same struggle they had, I'm going to die. And he, gets, he looks at them, he says, your hearts, Mark 16, your hearts are getting hard. Mm. You see, why? The, the whole issue of Martha, she is into theology. Mm. Yeah. Mary is into her heart, right? Ah, he, he, there's no resurrection. She's struggling between the Shema and the high, heli view, right? And Jesus Christ is coming to her. He says, you know what? Since you are struggling with the resurrection, he took two four days to make a two-day trip. He created the problem because he wanted to show her that let's not have this discussion. Let's just go do it. Mm -hmm. Because if I am the resurrection, then he, four days dead, the Jews believed that the spirit hovered over the body for three days and there was hope. Mm -hmm. After four days, there's no hope. So he purposely waited for the, That's Jesus. He purposely waited for the fourth day to show her I am the resurrection. There is hope. So Jesus Christ is, is, a, is to him, it's how does this word, the Old Testament folks, it's a lot of words, mm -hmm. but it didn't become flesh. He wanted us to see the word as flesh because yes. he's not giving us a word just for word. He's giving it to be a light onto our feet and a light onto our path. Ooh, to me, that's good. That's good. we have lost that in Christendom. So yes. we have a lot of word but we don't take it to life. Right. So the church has as many divorces as the world. Mm. The church has suicidal rates like the world. There's the, there's mm. not, the, the disparity right. is amazing to me. And that's what my passion is. How could we have the same results in our marriage like the world? Right. right. And, and, right. and how could our children struggle with drugs and promiscuity and all these different things just like the world, but they grew up right next to us. Yeah. It's not a lack of knowledge. If you sit down and say to a child, oh no, you can't, you can't sleep around, or, no, you can't. It's not a lack of knowledge, it's a lack of application. Yeah. I wanted to touch on something that you had mentioned earlier about um, Jesus' divinity and how he came down willfully mm -hmm. himself mm -hmm. um, and died on the cross. So it wasn't, I, I think the church a lot of times focuses on it, the other, the Jewish people are, you know, we have that perception sometimes that the Jewish people killed Jesus. And it was actually his own will that actually allowed that to happen. Oh, yeah. So I just want to make sure that that was a clarifying thing. So oh, a lot of times yeah, the church yeah. does feel that that's what has actually happened, but that wasn't. He actually had his own will that he decided. So it was his will to be able yeah. to die on the cross. And I just think that's really important. It is important, mm. especially in the context in which we are. Yes, absolutely. And so you also have another book <laughs> called <laughs> Making Your Vision a Reality, which is really cool. And this is an incredibly powerful concept with all the work that you're doing. You're speaking from experience in this book. So what are some of the ways that we can make our vision a reality? I think I tell people all the time there's three major areas. Stop thinking that a vision is something that you have to hear in a restroom after pizza. That's not right. it. Okay? <laughs> a vision is finding out what God has for you to do based on the spiritual gifts that he's given you, et cetera, and the needs of your people. Third, second thing has to be a strategy to accomplish it. In other words, if you have an idea but no strategy, you're not going to accomplish it. And if money is the only way you think you're going to accomplish it, right. then you're not going to accomplish it. And the third thing is you have to have a budget that says, this is what my dream is, but here's my starting point. Right. And the Lord always fuels what he starts up to get done. He take always fuels steps. it. Absolutely. You got to take the first step. Step into the waters at exactly. flood stage. Yes. Exactly. And, and I'll put you in the wilderness the with no food. <laughs> That's right. And it's funny yep. when he sent manna, they were out of food. Yep. I, 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 well, actually, when I studied that, it shocked me that he waited until they were out of food. 
to see what they will do. Right. And that's when they started fussing at him. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I tell you what, audience, I hope you've been listening to some of these wonderful books. I am excited yes. about getting some of these. And I know you're working on a new book right now. I yeah. want you to tell us about that. I'm working on a book that uh, is really riveted off of my sisters and my mom and my sisters cool. called Leaders in Heels. Oh, yeah, I, I like, like it. <laughs> Leaders in Heels. Just found a publisher. Uh, it's just looking at the, the women in the scriptures that are forgotten. Just, just picking one, Lydia. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, two Lydia. Lines. Huh? She has two lines in the Bible. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so she did a lot of work. She's the reason we have the church of Thyatira. Yep. Wow. So we, we, we would see Paul, and, but Lydia was the one who was committed because of her passion to mm. say, come to my house. You must stay at my house. She did those things. The, for instance, Jesus Christ went from place to place, Galilee, Capernaum, all these places. Who washed his clothes? Who cooked? Right. The, Luke 8 said they were, were women. Martha. No. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know it wasn't Mary, right? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't Mary. <laughs> so there are a lot of women in the Bible that we don't think. For instance, uh, just, you know, Deborah. Right. Mm. You know, you start thinking Miriam. You st so a lot of times because the, the God started off with the family and therefore kept the leadership going from family to church to tribe, etc., we don't see the, what that helper looks like. Mm -hmm. And because of the impact of my own wife in my life and the quietness in which she does a lot of ministry, I think women are forgotten on the impact that they make. And many times it's overlooked because the men have such a, for, uh, you know, automatically they're more physically stronger and they're called to lead homes and all these different things and then this major sports. So a lot of times people forget who is the, what is the, I say they, they can have a nice tire but no air in it. Well, thank you so much, Dr. <laughs> Cannings, for sharing your wisdom with us today on Pop Talk. I think as Christians we should all desire to have a more powerful walk with God, but it all starts in the quiet place. Mm along with the one who gives us guidance. Amen. If you want to reach out to Dr. Cannings, you can find him at powerwalkministries.org. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us on the show. And uh, we, we really have enjoyed this. And there, I want to read all your books. I mean, it's just so much yeah. wisdom that you've shared with us just in this little bit of time. So thanks, Dr. Cannings, thanks for being for on the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Um, so and we would really love for you to reach out to us here at Pearls of Promise Ministries. You can email us at info at pearlsofpromiseministries.com. You can like us on Facebook at Pearls of Promise Ministries. Follow us on Twitter at Pop Talk Media or at Pearls of Promise or on Instagram at pop underscore ministries, got all that? <laughs> and all of our past Pop Talk television shows and our award-winning documentaries are on our YouTube channel at Pearls of Promise Ministries. And thank you to our 17 television platforms and the great production team from Grace Point Media. For all your media needs, go to gracepoint.media. So that is our program today. Thanks for watching. We're just ordinary girls who God turned into pearls. We'll see you next time.